Hello and welcome to the new Yankee Workshop, Season 1, Episode 10, The Candle Stand. Norm travels to the Hancock Shaker Village in Western Massachusetts to gather ideas for his own design for a candle stand. Returning to his workshop, Norm shows home woodworkers how to build an exact replica using power tools, including a lathe, router and a bandsaw. Enjoy! Well, for a power tool junkie like me, being in a woodworking shop that's been in existence since 1790 is like being in heaven. Look at this equipment. All the pieces were driven by belts and pulleys, and the main source of power was a big water wheel. Along with all the other water-driven tools, we found this lathe. And it had an additional feature, a series of belts that you could move around to adjust the speed that the stock would spin. Of course, the stock fits in between here. And over here is the tool rest for using all the cutting tools. And the amazing thing is, it's all built out of wood. And over here, probably one of the earliest scroll saws. Again, driven by belts on a wheel that would turn, moving this wooden stick up and down to operate the blade. Now, using this scroll saw and the lathe, you might be able to turn out a piece like this, the classic shaker candle stand. This one has a round top made of cherry with a nice turning down the middle and these very delicate legs. You know, I'd really like to get all the equipment and belts whirring in this shop and make this table. But they tell me that the source of water, the pipes that come in here, are all rotted out. So, I guess it's back to the new Yankee workshop. Well, remember I told you I was a power tool junkie. So when I came back to the shop, the challenge for me was to figure out a way to build this piece almost entirely with power tools. And I think I found a way to do it. In fact, the only hand tool I used was my utility knife. Now I'm going to get started by working on the top. And if you look at the edge here, you can see it's only about a half inch thick. And that's real important to the look of this piece. So I headed down to my hardwood outlet to try to find some half inch cherry. And all he had was three quarter inch and thicker. Now, for a price, he could have planed it down a half inch, but since I have a thickness planer here at the shop, I'm going to do it myself. Well, now I just cut the cherry into three pieces, 19 inches long. Now I want to glue these boards up with a little bit of yellow glue. I want to put them in my pipe clamps and just enough pressure to hold them together and not squeeze all the glue out. Now another thing I pay attention to when I do the glue up is the growth rings. If I wet this a little, I guess you'll see it better. You can see here the growth rings are down, natural curve of the tree, and here it's up, and here it's down. And by doing that, it adds stability to the top and will minimize any warping. Now I guess I'll just set this aside to dry. Well, while that top dries, I think I'm going to turn my attention to the center column. Now, while I was out at the Hancock Shaker Village, I took some measurements of different diameters, like this section at the top, where it gets narrower, and at several points all the way down the column, as well as some height measurements from the bottom to this little ridge and to up here. Now, with all those measurements, I'm able to get a profile of the column. And I've taken a piece of hardboard, which has some white contact paper on the other side with a one-inch grid, and transferred all those measurements to give me a profile of the column. And now I just have to take that over to my bandsaw and cut it out. Now that cleans up those edges pretty good, making them nice and smooth, and now I have a pretty good cross-section of that column, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. Now here's the piece of cherry I'm going to use for that center column. It's about three inches square, 
And I've drawn a circle on the end of it showing me the maximum diameter of any point of the turning. I'm going to knock these corners off, and that'll save me some time when I get to the lathe. I'm just going to use my bandsaw. Well, now we're ready to do some turning. And I've put this duplicating attachment on top of the lathe, and here's that template that I was making. And the template is perfectly aligned with the lathe. And with this tool, which slides on a perfectly flat base, I use the top, which is a nylon follower, to go along my template, and the bottom, which is a cutter, to remove the stock. And I'll get an exact copy each time. It's much like the key machine that you see at the hardware store. That's nice and smooth now after a sanding, and now I'm ready to cut it to length. Okay, well with my column cut to length, I'm ready to start working on the legs. Now they're going to come out of three-quarter inch stock, and I've made a template just like the one for the turning so that I can make all the legs the same and trace the outline on the piece of wood. And now I'm ready to cut those out using my bandsaw. Now this drum sander attachment on my drill press does a good job smoothing out any of the imperfections left by the bandsaw. The only difficult thing about making this table is attaching the legs to the column. Now you could use dowels or you could use a mortise and tenon joint, but the shakers used a dovetail joint. Now it's easy to make the dovetail in the leg, but it's a little more difficult to cut it into the center column. Now before I do anything though, I'm going to lay out that center column for the three legs. Now we have a 360 degree circle, so that means each leg is going to be at 120 degrees. So I've made this little block just to make it easier to do all this layout. And you just mark one, spin it around, and then mark the other one. So now I have the three layout lines for the legs. Now to cut the dovetails, I needed a jig, so I made a little box, three sides and capped off on one end. And I've added a little shim so that when I place my column in this box, it's not going to rock. It's going to sit flat on the bottom. Now, with it set in place like that, I'm going to add two more small shims just to center it side to side. And I'll spin it until I line up that leg layout line with the little line that you see on the outside of the box. Now, I'll pre-drill some holes in the end for some screws keep this column from spinning while I mill it. Now I'm just going to put a couple shims up at this end to hold the column straight at this end of the box and hold those in place with a couple clamps. Now to cut the dovetails in the column, I'm going to use my router with a guide fence. And the dovetail bit is three quarters of an inch wide, and that's a little bit too much material to remove in one pass. So I'm going to start out with a three-eighths inch straight slot bit. Now the router base just sits on top of the jig, and the fence sits up against one side. Now I'll plow a groove in and stop just a little bit short of this lip. Of course, the bit's not going to hit the end of the box because I already have a slot in here. <coughs>
Well, now I can replace this straight cutter with the dovetail bit, and that should make it a lot easier to cut. Notice I'm in no hurry to pull the router back out. You have to slide it through the dovetail, because if I lift it up, I'm just going to make a big hole. And now I'm ready to make the other two dovetails. Now what I have to do next is make a matching dovetail in each leg to fit into the column. And what I like to do is make a sample in a piece of pine first. And here you can see the dovetail. And we'll try it for fit in the column. And that's a little bit snug, but I think it'll be okay with the cherry. Now I'll make that dovetail using my router table. And what I have to do is take each leg and make two passes, run it through, turn it around, and do one on the other side. Now you'll notice that after making those cuts on the leg that I have a square shoulder here on that dovetail. But my column is round, so I'm going to have to back cut that just a little bit so it'll fit around the column. That's where that hand tool comes in. Okay, now here's my leg, and what I've done is clamped a steel square right flush with that shoulder cut. And now, by using my utility knife, I'm going to back cut it using the square as a guide for the blade. And by making several passes, I'll get that back cut that I need. Okay, now what I've done is just removed a little bit of that dovetail because in the column I stopped the dovetail cut a little bit short of this ledge and I want the leg to fit tightly there so I have to knock a little bit of that off. Well now I'm going to set this little pad down on my bench and I'm going to use that to hold my pieces while I route them and it looks like ordinary carpet underlayment, but they tell me it's something special, and it does hold small pieces very well, and so I don't need any clamps to hold it while I route it. And I want to use a quarter-inch rounding over bit, and I want to round over the top edges of each leg. Now we're ready for a little bit of assembly. These legs just need a little bit of yellow glue on each side of the dovetail. Spread that out with a brush and just slide it in to the slot. Maybe just a little gentle persuasion from a rubber mallet. Well, there's really no need to clamp any of this because the glue and the tight fit of the dovetail joints is really all you need. Yeah. Now on the one we saw at Hancock, there was a little metal plate that went on the bottom of this. But I don't think we need it. These dovetails are pretty tight. Now, another thing you want to make sure is if there's any glue that's spilled out or squeezed out, clean it with a damp sponge, or else the, the finish won't, set, won't, won't be able to settle into the wood. Now let's look at the prototype again. And turn it upside down, and you see there's a cleat that holds the top. It sits on the center column, and it's screwed to the top. And that helps the top become more stable. Now to make that cleat, I'm going to start out with a piece of wood a little bit longer than I need. And you see these edges are curved a little bit. So what I want to do first is find the exact center of this piece. And that's best done by just using a straight edge and going from corner to corner. After I get that center point, I'm just going to take a screw and partially drive it in to sort of give me like a pilot hole. 
I'm going to take that back out again. Go over to my bandsaw, where I have yet another jig. What I've done is put a cleat of wood in here. It's just wedged in between the fence of the bandsaw. And I've established this point. It says cleat pivot. So think of this as the column center, and this is half the length of the cleat. So now with a screw through that hole, I'm going to secure my piece of wood on there. Just enough to hold it. Yet still be able to spin it. And watch how well this works. There's one end. And there's the other. Now let's look at the brace on the prototype again. Instead of just leaving the wood a full three quarters of an inch thick, I want to taper down the edges, give it a nice gradual taper so that the corners will be a little bit thinner. And to do that, I'm going to use my vertical belt sander. Well, now what I need is a hole right in the center where the column is going to attach to the brace. And for that, I just put a one-inch bit in my drill press. Okay, now I can glue this to the top of the column. A little bit of yellow glue again. This little dowel. Spread that out. Now this just sits right up on top of there like this. And I'll put a little block over it. And a bar clamp with just a little bit of pressure while the glue dries. And I think we'll start working on that top. Well, now that the glue is completely dry on my top blank, I can unclamp it. Now I want to just scrape off the little beads of glue that squeeze through. And to do that, I'm just going to use an ordinary paint scraper. Okay, with all that glue scraped, now I'm going to take it over to my table saw and rip it to 18 inches. Well, now I want to square up and cross cut the blank. I'm going to use my panel cutter. You've seen me use it before. It's just a piece of plywood with a cleat screwed on it. And underneath, there's a piece of hardwood that rides in the standard slot of the table saw. And it just makes cross-cutting pieces like this much easier. Now, with one edge squared, I don't need the panel cutter anymore. And I'll just cross cut that to 18 inches. Now I've got a line that's in the center of the blank, but it's perpendicular to the grain. And now I'll take the top over to the bandsaw and again use this jig. Now there's another hole that's a little bit further out from that cleat hole I used. And that's because the top is a little bit larger. And I'm going to use that in a pivot much the same way I did with the cleat. Except this time, I'm going to just butt my blank lightly up against the blade. And now I want to drive a screw in that line. Okay, and now, by pivoting it on that screw, 
I'll get a perfect circle. I'm going to set my magic pad back down and put the circle on it, the top. I want to chamfer the bottom edge of the top, and to do that, I'm just going to use a chamfering bit in my router. Now we sand it, we sand it, and we sand it again until it's perfectly smooth. Well, now I'm ready to attach the cleat and the base to the top. I put a couple little tiny pencil marks here so I can line it up. And then I've laid out some marks for some screws, and I'm just going to pre-drill those first. Well, that's not going anywhere. And now this piece is ready for some finish. Now for my cherry candle stand, I've chosen a Danish oil finish. And I'm just applying that with a rag. And after about 15 minutes, I'll reapply more oil as necessary. And then I'll wipe the whole thing down in about half an hour. Well, that takes care of any excess. Now I'll let it dry overnight and give it another coat tomorrow. Now with three coats of oil thoroughly soaked into the wood, on this fourth coat, I'm going to use some 600 grit wet dry sandpaper to rub it in. And this will give it just a little bit of luster. Now look at that. I knew I could do it, and I only used a couple of hand tools. Thank you for watching. For more, please like and subscribe.